All right, a Ferris wheel problem. So the London Eye is this huge Ferris wheel um, in England with the diameter of 135 meters. And it completes one rotation every 30 minutes. Riders board this uh, from a platform that's two meters above the ground. Then they go up and they come back down. What we wanna do is we wanna express the rider's height above the ground as a function of time in minutes. So let's just kind of label everything to get started. So the diameter here going all the way across is 135 meters. So I guess what that means is halfway up is going to be 67.5 and the other half is also 67.5, just dividing that by two. But we board to get on this two meters above the ground. And obviously this is not drawn to scale as two is significantly larger than what it should look like in this situation. Okay, so you hop on the Ferris wheel, you go up till you get to the top and then you come back down. What this reminds me of is it looks like this is going to be a cosine graph where you go up, you come back down, but it looks like this one's been inverted. Uh, meaning that our normal cosine starts at the top, comes down and then ends at the top as well. So I'm thinking on this one, things are gonna go upside down. All right, so we're gonna be looking for a negative out in front of this entire function, but I am gonna be utilizing the cosine function. Um, I'm thinking negative out in front, so it goes and vertically has been reflected. Um, some other labels to go ahead and put on here, we can say, well, the very highest place we're gonna get to and the very lowest place. Well, you hop on two meters in, um, two meters high on this platform, right? And then you're going to be at the very, very, very top when we're at two plus 135, because that's the diameter get, to get all the way to the top. So 137, it's gonna be this very top value, just kind of labeling things, collecting all of this information. Um, we could find the midline if we wanted to, we don't really need to find that though. Instead, we wanna find what's the amplitude going to be. So the amplitude is, going from the middle, how far do we go to get to the top and how far do we go to get from the bottom? All right, so our middle here, kind of indicated over here on the circle, the distance to the top is 67.5 and the distance to the bottom is also 67.5. So we can say our amplitude is 67.5. But I'm gonna make that a negative 67.5 to go out in front here to indicate that it's been vertically reflected and flipped upside down from our normal cosine graph. Okay, so we've got that number out in front. It appears this has been shifted up, right? Our normal cosine starts at one, goes down, comes back up. This has been moved up, all right? So how far has been moved up? Or where is that midline? If I want to draw a line right through the middle of this graph, cutting this in half from how far it is from the top or from this midline to the bottom and how far it is from this midline to the top, um, Basically, we need to find this midline and where that's gonna be is it's gonna be this two plus 67.5. We can label the middle as 69.5 if we wanted to. But another thing that that's handy for is that's gonna be what's added to the very end here. We would have to add 69.5 to shift this entire graph up that far. So I got that computation by saying the midline here is gonna be that two meters where you board plus 67.5 to end up right in the middle here of our Ferris wheel. All right, the last thing we have to take into account on this one is that it completes one rotation every 30 minutes. So that goes into the period. So the period for sine or cosine is typically what you do is you take two pi, the original period for cosine, and you divide it by B, where B is some multiple attached directly to X or whatever your variable is on the inside here. All right, so I'm just labeling it as B for right now. We're gonna solve for B in just a second. So we can say two pi, the original period for cosine divided by some multiple on the inside, B. And in this situation, we know it has to equal 30 minutes. All right, now that we have this equation, let's do a little bit of solving down for B. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by B. This will eliminate it from the left-hand side. So we still have two pi equals 30 times B. So to get B by itself, we'll just divide both sides by 30. And we end up with B equals with just a little reducing down pi over 15. 
So we can put pi over 15 in here on the inside with our x. In this situation, it doesn't look like our graph has been picked up and moved to the right or moved to the left. Um, it still begins here right at a time of zero. And then it would end at a time of 30. Just kind of label on this. You can say 30 minutes late, later, we're going to finish up coming back down to the very bottom. I guess we could also do the computation that this highest point at the very top, we're going to top out and be at the top of the Ferris wheel 15 minutes in. Uh, we'd be in the middle of seven and a half minutes in, 22 and a half minutes in, we'd be in the middle over here. All right, so here's the equation um, of our function that we're trying to look for. Hopefully that makes sense as we kind of put all this information together and get a nice equation. All right, good luck as you're working on these. They're not that bad, but kind of take each piece of information um, by itself for what it's gonna tell you about the entire graph of your cosine function. Good luck.